Welcome to the lecture series under the ages of e Sectiona Initiative by VTU. This is Professor Umar Rao bringing you a series of lectures on transmission and distribution. So in my previous session, we discussed the generalized circuit model for transmission lines and we saw how the lines can be classified into short, medium and long and we saw how to write the circuit equations using the ABCD parameters and since the line is symmetric, the ABCD parameters satisfy two conditions. One, A is equal to D and two, AD minus BC is equal to one. Now let's proceed further and see how do we calculate these parameters for different models and how do we evaluate the performance of the transmission lines. So this is Professor Umar Rao, a retired professor from RV College of Engineering, Bengaluru. So in this session, the learning objective is to analyze short transmission lines. I want to draw your attention to what we discussed in the previous session. So in the short transmission line, we neglect the line capacitance. So we have a very simple model wherein the transmission line is modeled simply as a series impedance. So you see this is the model, right? So let's recollect what we had discussed earlier. Vs is the sending end voltage. Vr is the receiving end voltage. So I connect the load at the receiving end. Ir is the current drawn. This depends on the load. The current drawn at the receiving end depends on the load. And R and X are the total line resistance and reactance. And Is is the sending end current. So again, in case of single phase systems, R is the loop resistance. That is the resistance of two conductors. And in case of three phase systems, R is the resistance per phase. Clear? So now let's draw the phasor diagram for this simple circuit. So whenever you draw the phasor diagram, kindly don't memorize it. You can't memorize phasor diagrams. So you should know the logic of how to draw the phasor diagrams. So let's see how it can be done. Okay. So first start with the receiving end voltage this okay so i plot oa which is the receiving end voltage so when you draw the phasor diagrams always do it step by step very easy for you to draw it instead of memorizing something clear so you start with the receiving end voltage that is vr i represented by oa and if you want to solve it graphically, then you have to draw everything to scale. Otherwise, you can just draw the phasor diagram, get the mathematical relationships from that and then solve. So it need not be to scale. Okay. Next, what do I know? I have plotted VR. Next, the current, receiving end current. I calculated. So let us say I plot next IR at a phase angle of phi R. I have shown a lagging current because almost all the loads are lagging loads, right? So the system will always be drawing a lagging current unless under some special cases which we will discuss. So you are done with VR and IR, right? Now come to the circuit. So here IR flows through R and X. So you have a voltage drop in the resistance and in the reactance of the transmission line. Now you know that 
the voltage drop across a resistance is in phase with the current flowing through R. Clear? Now look at the circuit and see what is the current flowing through R. It is I R. I S, I R both are the same because it is a series circuit. So the current flowing through R is I R and the voltage drop across that is I R into R. That is the magnitude. And what is the phasor? In phase with I R. So next you draw I R X. You see here A B. Where is it? It's parallel to I R because it's a resistive drop. Clear? Next what is the drop in X? It is I into X. The current through X is I R. So I R into X. And what is the direction of the voltage drop in, a, in an inductor? So in an inductor, the voltage drop will lead the current through it by 90 degrees. So next plot IRX at 90 degrees to this. Clear? So now you can see Vs will be the sum of the drop here, here and Vr. So you draw Vs. So you see how simple it is? You don't have to memorize. So what are the steps? Step 1, draw, draw OA, the receiving end voltage. Step 2, draw IR at an angle of phi R. Step 3, draw IR R parallel to IR, that is AB. Step 4, draw BC at right angles to AB. So the vector sum of all that 3 is BS. Now next all these dotted lines are for writing the equations. Let us see what we are going to do with that. Now, so this angle also is phi r because i r r is proportional, it, it is in phase with i r. So this angle will also be phi r. So if this is phi r, this angle will be 90 minus phi r. So this angle will be phi r. You can do that little bit of geometry as an exercise. Okay. And the angle between Vs and Is, Is is same as Ir. So the angle between Vs and Is is phi s, that is this, this angle. This is phi s. The angle between Vs and Is, Is is equal to Ir. Clear? So we will make use of this vector diagram to derive our equation. So now let's derive the equation. I have again redrawn the vector diagram here for your reference. So let's see what is DE. DE is this part, this one, this. So DE is equal to BF. You can see from the phasor diagram. DE is equal to BF. And what is BF? You can see this is IR into X. So BF is IRX sin phi R. This is phi R. So this is the perpendicular of this right angle triangle. So BF will be IR into X sin phi R. Okay. And EF, EF is equal to DB. That is this length. What is that? So you can see you can take this triangle ADB. You can take the triangle ADB. So DB will be IR into R sin phi R. Okay, it's just geometry. There's no transmission and distribution. It's just maths. Clear? Next, from this phasor diagram, you can see Vs squared is OC squared. Vs squared is OC squared and that will be equal to OE squared plus CE squared. So OC squared is OE squared plus CE squared because OCE forms a right angle triangle. OCE forms a right angle triangle. Clear? So far so good. Now look at this. What is OE. This is OE. So OE will be OA 
plus AD plus D. OE is OA plus AD plus DE. Again, I suggest all of you take out a pen and a paper and work along with me so that you don't have to memorize anything. It's all very logically derivable. And similarly, CE, CE is CF minus EF. This is CF minus EF is CE. Now let's substitute all the values. OA, if you look at the phasor diagram, OA is VR. OA is VR. And AD, if you take this right angle triangle, ADB, AD will be IR into R cos phi R. IR into R cos phi R. And then DE, we have already written the equation. It is IR into X sin phi R. plus plus I need CF where is CF CF is this CF is this so what is CF you can see this is IR into X so CF would be IR X cos phi R if you take the triangle C B and F so it would be IR into X cos phi R and EF we have already written, EF is equal to DB is equal to IR into R sin phi R. This is pure geometry, that's all. So, VS would be the root of that. VS would be the root of that. Clear? Now, if you want to write it as a complex number, so this will only give you the magnitude. This equation will only give you the magnitude. So, if you want... To write it as a complex number, you see these two are perpendicular to each other. This is what? This is OE and CE. So, I can write this in terms of this term and this term. So, OE is in phase with VR. AE, OE is in phase with VR and CE is perpendicular to VR. So, if I take VR as the reference phasor, if I take VR as the reference phasor at an angle of 0 degrees, because whenever you solve for phasors, you need a reference, right? Then you can see IR and IS will be at an angle of phi IR minus. Why minus? Because it is lagging. Because it is lagging. And so, you can write this as Vs is equal to OE plus J times CE if you want to write it as a phasor. OE is the first term, this term and CE is the second. So, why I am telling you is there are different ways of doing it. And if you want to solve for the sending and power factor, you have to represent as a phasor. Because if I just use the equation for magnitude, then I will not know what is the angle. So, if you want the power factor angle, you have to solve for Vs as a phasor. So, all these are to tell you how to solve. All this is what you have done in network theory. That's all. So, in phasor notation, Vs is equal to Vr plus Ir into Z. So, you can substitute here. VR can you take as the reference. IR is at an angle of minus phi R because it is a lagging load. If it is a leading load, it will be plus phi R. And Z is equal to R plus JX. Clear? Fine. So, if I take this phasor here, VR is at an angle of 0 degrees. IR phase IR is at an angle of minus phi R. Therefore, IR when I expand it and write it in rectangular form, when I write IR in rectangular form, it would become IR into cos phi R minus J sin phi R because it is an, at an angle of minus phi R into R plus Jx that is Z that is Z. 
clear so now i'll put all the real terms into one and the imaginary terms into another so i have vr plus ir cos phi r plus ir x sin phi r plus j this look at this this is exactly what you derived from phasor notation okay so if you see here this is oe and this part is ce and why did we put this minus because it is a lagging load because it is a lagging load clear now so this equation has many terms so the computation may be slightly difficult so we can approximate it so as an approximation what i do i neglect this part because you look at this this is going to be much smaller than this so in any right angle triangle when the perpendicular distance is smaller than the horizontal distance you can neglect it why because you are going to take square root of this square plus the other square so if i neglect the second term i get an approximate sending end voltage that is only the first term now you can look at the phasor diagram one more thing you can do say i extend this i extend this so you can see vs this is phi s so vs cos phi s is this vs cos phi s will be vr cos phi r So this is VR, VR, this is VR, this is cos phi R. So you have VR cos phi R plus IR into R. So what are we trying to do here? We have different equations for the sending end voltage, how to calculate it. So you can use whichever is easy for you to calculate with the data given. And you can use the approximate voltage because it's not going to make a significant difference. If we solve some numericals, you will see that approximation doesn't affect the results much. Now let's see how to calculate the ABCD constants. I told you these ABCD constants are generalized constants. So we will derive them for the short line. So we already know the general equations for ABCD. What are the equations? You know Vs is equal to AVR plus BIR and Is is equal to CVR plus DIR. These are my generalized equations irrespective of the model I use. Now in this particular model, in the short line model, I have Vs is equal to Vr plus Ir into Z and Is is equal to Ir. So you can equate these two and these two. So if you see here, A will be equal to 1, A will be equal to 1 and B will be equal to Z it's fine because we know the unit of b is ohms similarly c will be equal to 0 and d will be equal to 1 does it satisfy our conditions yes a is equal to d and ad minus bc is equal to 1 okay so you know how to calculate the abcd parameters you know how to calculate the currents you know how to calculate the sending end voltage and we can calculate all the other parameters with them. Now, percentage regulation you know is Vs minus Vr by R into 100. So, I have the formula for Vs so I can calculate percentage regulation. Now, this will be equal to you look at this. If I use the approximate equation, Vs minus Vr is this term. 
if I use the approximate equation V s minus V r is I r r cos phi r plus I r x sin phi r right. So, that is the drop that is the drop in the line. So, I can write the regulation as we, we know what it is the difference between so this term is V s minus V r in the approximate model expression. But if you want to use the exact model, you can do the calculation, get the value and compute the value of regulation divided by Vr into 100. Now, the same thing, if it were a lagging load, this is the equation. If the load was leading, then this would become plus because the angle Ir would be at an angle of phi r plus phi r. So, here we took Ir at an angle of minus phi r because it is a lagging load. So, if it is a leading load, this term would be plus. So, the regulation would be this minus because you have a j there. Okay. So, you have the general expression for leg regulation. Now, see here in a lagging load, this can never be equal to 0 because this is a addition. So, the numerator can never be equal to 0, which means that in lagging loads always the receiving end voltage will be lesser than the sending end voltage. Okay. Now, here there is a possibility that this term is equal to 0 when the first when this is equal to this when these two are equal then the numerator becomes 0. So, in such a case the regulation may become 0. What is the meaning of regulation being 0? It means the receiving end voltage is equal to the sending end voltage. Therefore, we can conclude that 0 regulation is possible only with leading power factors, leading power factors. So, you can see the two terms must be equal that is I r r cos phi r should be equal to I r x sin phi r. Therefore, tan phi r is equal to r by x. So, at a load, at a load whose power factor is given by solving for tan phi r equal to r by x, what is r? The resistance of the line x, reactance of the line, we can calculate the power factor at which the regulation will be 0. So, now supposing if you have the impedance angle theta is tan theta by x by r, you know in any impedance the angle r plus j x tan theta is equal to x by r. So, we can write phi r is equal to pi minus theta. Now, what you should immediately notice is that the regulation, actual regulation depends on the current. The actual regulation depends on the current, but the, regu the power factor at which the regulation is 0 does not depend on the current. It is simply given by pi minus theta. So, it simply depends on the values of r and x. Clear? Efficiency output power by input power into 100. So, be careful when you are doing the equivalent, if you are using three, three phase power on the numerator, make sure you are using the three phase power and three phase loss in the denominator. If you are using line to phase, the single phase power in the numerator, then use the single phase power in the denominator and the single phase loss. So, you should do one three phase and one single phase. So, be very careful when you use the formula. So, again to remind you of that and to help you to be cautious, I have again written output power in single phase is V r i r cos phi r and input power is V s i s cos phi s and in three phase it is root 3 V r l i r l cos phi r and root 3 V s l i s l cos phi s or you can do three times V r i r cos phi r or three times V s i s cos phi s. Okay. Be very, very careful with this. So, where are we now? Uh, we have derived the 
model for the short line, found out what are the ABCD constants and got expressions for the sending end voltage and for the regulation and found that the regulation can be 0 at some power factor and we know how to calculate the efficiency and the regulation. So, now we are all set with enough information to solve some problems. Let us see what it is. Let us take a very simple example. A single phase line delivers 100 kilowatts at 6.6 kV 0.9 pf lag. Copper conductors with resistivity of 1.725 into 10 to the power of minus 6 ohm centimeter and area of cross section 0.8 centimeter square are used. If the transmission efficiency is 95 percent, what is the length of the line? A very simple problem. Okay. So, to use any of the equations, first you need the receiving end current. And now, how do you read the data? Always see here, normally we always talk about the power delivered to the load. So, even if the word deliver or supplies is not there, supposing I loosely say a single phase line of 100 kilowatts, generally it means that that 100 kilowatts is the receiving end power, not the sending end power. Clear? So, if you say a 5 HP motor, you are talking of the output power. Okay. And you have the voltage specified, the receiving end voltage. Because why, why we specify the receiving end parameters? Because that is what I know. I know what is the load I, I am connecting. So, 100 kilowatts will refer to the load whether I say delivered, supplied or whether I do not say it. And why am I saying 6.6 .6 kV? Because I know what is the voltage requirement of my load. If I specify 6.6 .6, the sending end voltage, then the load uh, I, I have to calculate what is the drop and the receiving end voltage will not be 6.6 .6 kV clear. So, therefore, normally the power, the voltage unless specified means the receiving end, power factor is 0.9. Okay. So, we are all set. So, power is 100 kilowatts, again just be careful of these watts, kilowatts, megawatt, the units. It is a single phase line, therefore, IR is 100, this is because it is kilowatts divided by 6.6 .6, again this is because of kV pf power factor. So, I get I r is equal to 16.835 amperes. Now, the efficiency is 95 percent which means it is 0 0.95. So, you know efficiency is receiving end power by sending end power. So, you can find the sending end power, receiving end power is 100 by point. So, now you see why I cannot specify the sending end power because it depends on the receiving end power. So, if, if I change the load from 100 kilowatts to 50 kilowatts, I will get some other sending end power. So, I always know what is the receiving end power because that depends on what is the load I am going to collect. So, I have the sending end power. Now, the line losses is P s minus P r. I know P s, I know P r. So, it is 5263 watts or 5.263 kilowatts. So, what are you expected to find? You are expected to find the length of the line, length of the line, right. So, let r be the resistance of the line. And the line losses is 2 i squared r. Why did I put 2 i squared r? Because it is a single phase line in two conductors. So, in a single phase line you have to take the loop resistance, loop resistance. Okay. So, it will be the resistance of two conductors. So, that is why it is 2 i squared r. Therefore, 
2 into i you know i is nothing but i r into the resistance r is this. So, from this I get the value of r 9.285 ohms. Okay. So, here r is r is the resistance of one conductor. I am multiplying it by 2 to get the loss due to both the conductors. So, I squared r is a loss in one conductor. Okay. Now, you know r, you know this r is equal to rho l by a, we know this formula. Rho is given to you 1.725 into 10 to the power of minus 6 and from this you can write the expression for l, I got the value of r, area of cross section is given. So, you get so many centimeters that is equal to 43.06 kilometers. So, now were we justified in using the model, the simple model? Yes, because 43 kilometers is a short line and I have used the short line model. So, I can depend on my values. Now, you see why accuracy is not so important instead of 43.06, if you got even 44, it does not matter. Okay. Now, let us take slightly more uh, involved problems. A single phase overhead transmission line delivers 500 kilowatts at 33 kV 0 0.8 pf lag. So, the total resistance and reactance of the line are 8 and 16 ohms respectively. Using the short line model determine sending end voltage using exact equation, we have derived exact equation, sending end voltage using approximate equation, the sending end power factor, the voltage regulation and the transmission efficiency. You have to find out all these parameters. So, let us solve, simple let us do it step by step. Now, let us go back. So, here a single phase, it is single phase at 33 kV. So, the first thing you have to see is whether it is single phase or three phase, okay, it is single phase fine. So, V r is 33 kV, you know that, power factor is said to be 0.8. So, you can find, so cos phi r is 0 0.8, so sin phi r will be 0 0.6, 0 0.6. Next, you have to find the current, you have to find the current. Power is given 500 kilowatts, 33 kV, power factor 0 0.8, so I get a current of, I get a current of 18.94 amperes. Now, you have been asked to find the sending end power factor. So, you have to solve with phasor notations, you have to solve with phasor notation, very simple. So, you have this equation V s is equal to V r plus I r z, all these are phasors, all these are phasors and whenever you solve for a phasor equation, you need a reference and we saw that the best reference is the receiving end voltage V r, therefore, V r is 33,000 at an angle of 0 degrees and what about I r? I r you have found out the magnitude 18.94 amperes, it is at 0 0.8 lag that is minus 36.86 degrees, why minus? Because it is lagging. So, this in rectangular form is equal to 15.152 minus j 11.361 amperes. So, you do not have to use the formula and all that simple you can just do V s is equal to V r plus I r z and do the mathematical calculation like how you have done in circuit theory. So, z is equal to 8 plus j 16 ohms 
z is equal to 8 plus j 16 ohms and so V s is this and I get the real part imaginary part I get 33.3 .3 at an angle of 0 0.26 degree kilo volts. Clear? This is exact no approximations anywhere no approximations anywhere. So, your sending end voltage magnitude is 33.3 .3 kV and the phase angle is 0 0.26 degrees with respect to what? 0 0.26 degrees with respect to what? Do not jump and say that is the power factor, right. It is 0 0.26 degrees with respect to V r. This is again a very common mistake. So, you, the power factor of sending end is not the cos phi of 0 0.26 degrees, no. Because when you are doing with phasor calculation, any angle you calculate is always with respect to the reference. So, this is at 0 0.26 degrees with respect to V r, my reference is V r that I have taken to be at 0 degrees, clear. So, you now found the exact voltage, exact voltage. Now, let us see how to calculate the voltage using the approximate equation. So, the approximate voltage we have this equation V s is equal to V r plus I r r cos phi r plus I r x sin phi r. So, are we ready with all the data? Yes, we know all the data. So, I find out V s. So, I got 33.3 .3 kV again. So, which means that there might be some variation in the second or third digit which does not matter. So, you see the approximation did not lead to any error clear. So, it is valid because it is a short line. Now, so you, you are done with the second part of the question that is calculate V s using approximate formula we are done with it. Next, I need the sending end power factor angle. So, this 0 0.26, so see here, this is V r. Now, I r is here, this is 36.86 and V s is here. So, this is 0 0.26, of course, 0 0.26 will be very small, just I have drawn an exaggerated picture. So, what is the power factor angle? Power factor angle, angle is always with respect to the voltage and current. So, when you talk of sending end power factor, it is the angle you have to take between sending end voltage and sending end current. What is the sending end current? It is equal to the receiving end current. So, the angle between V s and I s is 0.26 plus 36.86 that is 37.12 degrees. So, you get 0 0.797 lag because I s lags V s, it is lag, clear. Next, I want the regulation, simple V s minus V r by r, so into 100, so I get 0 0.195, 0 0.915 percent, this is less than 1 percent which is very good regulation is good. Higher regulation means more drop, so it is bad. So, when you say the regulation is good means the value of regulation should be as low as possible. Sending in power is V s I s cos phi s. So, I have V s I s cos phi s. So, this is in kilo volts. So, whatever value you get will be in kilowatts. So, I get 502.69 kilowatts. So, efficiency is receiving end by sending end power into 100. So, I get 99.46 percent which is pretty good. So, transmission lines normally have a very good efficiency if you compare it with efficiency of other electrical equipment like motors, generators, they have a very high efficiency. Okay, it is 99.46 percent. So, you see 
you are more or though we call it as a transmission line performance calculation, you are actually solving a simple RL circuit, nothing more than that. And only thing is you are solving it like a phaser, in, you would have done such problems in first year of uh, engineering in basic electrical engineering course. Only thing is the implication of the parameters is different here. Now, let us take one more example, a three phase transmission line delivers 5 megawatts at 33 kV 0.8 pf lag. The resistance and reactance of the line is 3 and 6 ohms per phase respectively. Determine the sending end voltage, the percentage regulation and the transmission efficiency using short line model. Now, when it comes to three phase, remember the power data 5 megawatts is always the three phase power. The power specified is always the three phase power and the voltage specified is always the line to line voltage. The voltage is always line to line voltage. Whereas, resistance and reactance will be per phase because you cannot specify res resistance or reactance line to line, you cannot do it, clear. So, you have to be very careful, this is standard. When I say a 230 kV three phase line means it is 230 kV line to line and if I say the load is 500 megawatts means it is a three phase, three phase power. So, in your calculations when you solve, you have to keep this in mind. So, V r is 33 kV, so this root 10 to the power of 3 is to convert it into volts divided by root 3. Why did I divide by root 3? I told you that my circuit model for 3 phase is based on a line to neutral voltage and the line voltage is specified to be 33 kV. So, the phase voltage, I need the line to neutral voltage is 33 by root 3. Do not forget, if you forget root 3 all your answers will be wrong. So, this is the phase voltage, this is the phase voltage. Now, current I r is P by 3 V r cos phi r. Now, can you say why I divided by 3? Why did I divide the power by 3? So, you will be able to answer it if you had listened to me when I told you that the power specified is the three phase power. So, I cannot use three phase power and line to neutral voltage, got it? So, therefore, here I divide by 3 to get the single phase power because I am using line to neutral voltage. So, P is 5 megawatts, so into 10 to the power of 6 divided by 3 to get the per phase power divided by V r divided by cos phi r. So, I get 109.34 amperes, 109.34 amperes. You can also calculate I r as p, where this p is three phase power, total power by root 3 V R L, V R L is the line line to line voltage which is 33 kV, you will still get the same answer. Okay. So, either you can use P is equal to root 3 V L I L cos 5, there is a total three phase power or you can use single phase, P is equal to V I cos phi, that root 3 will not be there, in which case you will be using the line to neutral voltage. So, first let us do the exact equation. So, exact equation is V s is equal to root of V r plus I r r cos phi r plus I r x sin phi r the whole squared plus I r x cos phi r minus I r r sin phi r whole squared. So, I start substituting for the values, I know the values right. So, V r I r r 
cos phi r i r x sin phi r i r x cos phi r i r r sin phi r be very careful when you substitute do not mix up one for the other. So, I get this 19708.6 squared plus 328.02 squared this is the magnitude of V s this is the magnitude of V s. Now, if you want to write in phasor form these two are the two components of the phasor. Okay. So, again you need not go back and do V s is equal to V r take that as the phasor reference I r z and do the calculations here this itself. So, in phasor form this would be this is the real part and this is the imaginary part plus j that is why I am taking root of this square plus this square. So, you get the angle 0 0.953 again remember this angle is which angle? it is the angle between the sending end voltage and the receiving end voltage not the sending end power factor angle clear. So, I have the receiving sending end voltage. So, since it is a three phase system the normal practice is again to quote in terms of the line voltage. So, the sending end line voltage will be into root 3 34.141 kV. So, you see here if the sending end voltage is 34.141 kV, the receiving end voltage is only 33 kV that 1.141 is dropped in the line. Okay. Now, let us find the percentage regulation. So, I have the sending end voltage there is a decimal there 34.141 minus 33 by 33 into 100. So, that is 3.457 and losses 3 into i squared r why this 3? Why this 3? The 3 is to account for all the 3 phases the total loss in the system. The total loss in the system is the loss in all the 3 conductors. And since we are assuming a balanced system, the current in all the three lines will be the same. Okay. So, 3 into you have calculated I r into r, r is 3. So, I get 107.597 kilowatts. So, the receiving end power is 5 megawatts that is 5000 kilowatts. So, I can find the percentage of efficiency receiving end power plus sending end power which is receiving end power plus loss. So, this is loss, this is P r and this is P r. So, I get 97.89 percent. So, you saw that again now the transmission efficiency is quite high. We will consider one more example. A three phase transmission line delivers 30 megawatts at 0.9 pf lag 132 kV and 1 centimeter square aluminum conductors with a resistivity of 2.82 into 10 to the power of minus 8 ohm meter are used. Estimate the distance over which the load can be delivered. Now, I have put a constraint that the transmission loss should not be more than 5 percent of the power delivered. Okay. So, you know that as the distance is more the losses will be more because the resistance of the line will be more. So, what is the maximum distance I can transmit? 30 megawatts at 0 0.9 pf lag 132 kV if I do not want to exceed 5 percent loss that is the meaning of the question. Simple I r is p r again I have to divide by root 3 because v r l cos phi r 
previous case I divided by 3 because I use the line to neutral voltage. So, I am just using it differently to show you that you can do it using the line to line voltage also that is the idea here. So, P r is 30 megawatts. So, 10 to the power of 6 do not forget all these things units. I have found answers, absurd answers. Students write the current flowing th through the transmission line is some 1000 milliampere's and such answers they write all because the units are wrong. Okay. And root 3, 132 into this is 10 to the power of 3 into 0.9. So, 145.79 amperes. If you take line to neutral voltage here, here you have to divide by 3 like I did in the previous example. So, now what is specified losses is 5 percent of 30 megawatts which is 1.5 megawatts that is my loss. Okay. So, what is the total loss in a 3 phase system? It is 3 into i squared r again why 3? 3 conductors, 3 conductors and r is always for each conductor. So, the loss is 3 into i squared r. So, 3 into i squared I have r is equal to 1 point this is the restriction. I want the loss to be restricted to 5 megawatts. From this I calculate the value of r 23.52 ohms. Now, you know r is equal to rho l by a, r is equal to rho l by a, rho is given ohm meter, a is 1 centimeter squared that is 1 into 10 to the power of minus 4 meter squared or you convert this into centimeter either one. So, if you look at the data one is in centimeter square another is ohm meter. So, either the ohm meter you have to convert it into ohm centimeter or centimeter square into meter square do not use the units directly. So, r is equal to rho l by a you have r I get l is so many meters that is 83.4 kilometers. So, what is the meaning of this answer you can see 84.3 meters is the maximum transmission line length over which I can transmit 30 megawatts at 0 0.9 pf lag 132 kV if I want to keep my loss less than 5 percent. So, it can be the line can be less even if the line is 60 kilometers you can keep it the loss will definitely be lesser than 5 percent. Okay. But if you exceed that length then you cannot keep the loss at 5 percent that means your efficiency will be lesser than what it is for that line length that is the meaning of this uh, question. So, in the different examples we have seen, if you have noticed all the loads we have considered are lagging loads that is the first thing. And whenever you solve problems do not do it blindly keep track of the parameters. Okay. So, have you noticed the PF range? I have not said the PF is 0 0.2, 0 0.3 we are not solving. I told you the PF is in this problem it is 0 0.9 in the previous numerical it was 0 0.8. So, when you are solving the problems keep your attention over the range of parameters we are playing with. So, the power factor of the loads will not be 0 0.2, 0 0.3 they will all be high 0 0.8 and above 0 0.9, 0 0.92, 0 0.95 that will be the range of power factors. So, if you are given some data like the power factor is 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 immediately you should know that it is a wrong data it is absurd. You do not have transmission lines connected to a load which whose power factor is 0 0.2 clear and then just look at the range of efficiencies we got. So, it is always more than 95 percent we got 97 point something 99 point something. So, the efficiency is high. Supposing you are solving the problem and you get an efficiency of the transmission line is 65 percent immediately you should know that you have made a mistake because the efficiency cannot be 65 percent as low as 65 percent it will be very high for a line. 
clear? You saw the regulation, I got 1 percent, 3 percent. So, when you saw if you get regulation 20 percent means it is wrong, you have made some mistake in the calculation or you have forgotten some conversion or you have taken some wrong data. So, you should get a feel for the values. So, by looking at the value you should know if the value is absurd. Okay? So, with this we will end this session and uh, continue with more numericals and detailed models in the subsequent sections. Thank you.